everybody, it is the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to your July 2018 Funko Pop update. So, I hope that you have found the most comfortable chair in the house and have a snack and your favorite beverage, or either, with you today, because I am anticipating this to be the longest Funko Pop update that I have ever given you guys on my channel, and I cannot believe that next month we will be featuring the 50th episode. But, in anticipation for a celebration like that, we've got so much to celebrate today. Not only do I have a massive haul to show you guys in regards to the Summer of Nostalgia, but we also have all of the San Diego Comic Con pops that Funko have released that I am so excited to talk about with you guys. One of the few things that I have to say that I'm very thrilled about is the fact that I don't want too many of them. There are so many great lines and so many great specials that Funko gave us, but not every one of them is something that I really wanted, but we have to celebrate them nonetheless. But Funko didn't stop there, because sprinkled throughout the San Diego Comic-Con news, there was also so many new regular lines that Funko is going to be releasing in the coming months, and let me say, they are definitely Definitely some true fan favorites. But what are we waiting for, everybody? Let's get started. So sit back and relax and start having at your snacks, and let's continue on with the summer of nostalgia and take a look at how my Funko Pop collection has been growing. So to continue on with the summer of nostalgia, we have to take a look at the wonderful world of Disney. And there is a great deal to cover because this is not going to be the only group that you're going to see today. There's also some Pixar Pops that I'm very excited to showcase as well. And this is not going to be the first time you're going to see a Disney Pop haul on this channel this year because there are a lot of additional ones that have been announced in the coming months that I'm really excited to get, including some San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. But if we wait till that long, there's just going to be way too much of a pop overload. So let's at least begin with what we have today. So we're going to go into the center and take a look at some very awesome and adorable pops. Of course, celebrating the 90s. 80th anniversary of Mickey Mouse, it is only appropriate that we take a look at the guy that started it all, of course, with his sweetheart, and that is the Toys R Us double pack of Mickey and Minnie that was made for Valentine's Day. Now, when this double pack first came out, I thought that it would be an adorable gesture to my wife just to show my love, but she really didn't care much for it. But then, all of a sudden, the cataclysmic announcement was made that Toys R Us was going out of business, so of course, what did we do? We ran over to Toys R Us to see what was actually around that we could possibly purchase, and there were tons of Funko Pops, because we went very, very early when they announced the closing, and we saw so so many of this double pack, and I said to her, you know, maybe we should get this, and she took a look at it, and she noticed that since there was a Toys R Us sticker on, she's like, if not, then this is going to be a very missed opportunity. So, we got Mickey and Minnie, and this is great because we have some earlier versions of Mickey, and they're not really great, and the ones that are in this double pack are definitely awesome because they got the right skin tone, first and foremost, rather than a chalk white, and I love the poses. I love that he's got his legs crossed in a little humble position. I love Mickey. Minnie's pose with her on her high heels and just so happy that he is sending her a little box of chocolates and all in all they are just absolutely fantastic. The paint jobs on these, they're bleeding a little bit but they're not too terrible. I love that they've got all the great details especially with the pose behind his back. And I also love Minnie's grasping and clasping of the hands. And also the tails are a little bit more sturdier than the old pops, so these are not too bad. So a great double pack with a happy memory of Toys R Us. But now let's take a look at the Amazon exclusive that was announced during Toy Fair. And this was a surprise that I gave my wife. I said to her when the box finally arrived, if you don't want it... I kind of also bought it for myself because I love it, and when she saw the box, she's like, I hate you, but I want it. And that, of course, is the Amazon exclusive of Moana's Two Little Sidekicks, Pua, and Hey Hey. I absolutely love the way this pop looks, which is why if she didn't want it, I would have gotten it for myself, but... 
the fact that there was a Hey Hey Pop last year that came out, and a tiny little Pua that came with a Moana, it was only right to finally give these two guys a pop form with sort of the actual correct height, if you will, but it's a fantastic pop. The details are fantastic. I love the colors, especially the bright pink on Pua's nose and ears, and all of the wonderful colors that make up Hey Hey. They're absolutely perfect, and I love the little tuft of hair on Pua's head that kind of looks like a little nest place for Hey Hey, and I just love the way that they're both looking. Pua's got a little bit of a smile, and Hey Hey's just giving us his brainless, dimwit look, but these three pops are definitely fantastic for Disney fans, and of course, upping the cute factor. But, you can't have some Disney heroes without some Disney villains, and I had to get my favorite lead Disney villain and my favorite Disney sidekick. From two separate movies, of course, but also two of the funniest Disney classics of all time, and they are Hades from Hercules and Kronk from The Emperor's New Groove. So let's take a look at Hades first. He is a glow-in-the-dark Hot Topic exclusive. If I was only going to get one Hercules character, it was going to be Hades and would have to be an exclusive. But now that they've officially announced that his henchmen, Pain and Panic, are coming in a double pack for San Diego Comic-Con, I am definitely going to get my hands on them. And Hades will make a big comeback when I feature that little duo. Because you can't have Hades without his henchmen. They're sort of going hand-in-hand. -hand. But I love this, especially because I'm such a huge James Woods fan. I love the expression. The casual used car salesman look with the sinister finger clasping absolutely wonderful the details on the bottom with the cloudy wispiness that he's supposed to be because he is a god I absolutely love it but of course the glassiness texture of the hair that does glow in the dark this is a wonderful and beautifully designed pop and Kronk of course played by Patrick Warburton they definitely capture the Patrick Warburn mannerisms in there. I love the expression on his face, and I especially love the cleft chin. It is wonderful. But all the other details are great, with the color scheme and the design of his garments, as well as the pattern of his hair, all the way down to that little fan on the top of his little helmet. This is a wonderful pop, and you know, I was hesitant to buy it, but at the same time, I love Kronk so much, so there was no reason why I should say no. So I am very happy that I did get these two specific pops, and I'm so excited for the Pain and Panic double pack. Hopefully I will be able to get my hands on it. But we also got some other very interesting ones, some big ones as a matter of fact. I got my very first movie moment, and it is from Aladdin, and it is Aladdin's first wish. So happy that I got this one because Aladdin is one of my favorite Disney films, but the Disney pops that have come out featuring Aladdin were just things that I didn't want, and I got into pops way after the Genie pop came out, and as a huge Robin Williams fan, when I found out that this was happening, I just jumped at it because I had to get it, because this is also one of my favorite moments in all of Aladdin, because what better way to make your first impressions on the streets of Agrabah than riding your very own brand new camel! So of course I love the details on them, especially the details on the little podium with Al and the genie's face in the Disney animation. So wonderful. I love the details of him dressed as Prince Ali. Even though there was a little bit of a paint smudge over here, it really doesn't matter. But this is a big head. This is a massive head. This looks like a steamed bun if you take a look at it from the back. But I also love the detail on the texture of the feather. And I wish that they would have given Aladdin a little bit of a grin because it just would have fit the whole thing, especially when you take a look at Genie. Look at the big smile on Genie. That is just Robin Williams' look perfection. Also, the little details on the twinge of his beard and the little ponytail on the top of his head. Although, I think they may have gotten a little bit of a mistake over there and they didn't paint this. I'm not exactly sure, but I love the look of the tuxedo and the curves on his shoes. They did a perfect job with this. And also, the little base, all the little stage lights, really, really cool. And they go all the way around. And this is definitely one of the coolest pops that they have in the Disney collection right now, and a movie moment to boot. I absolutely love this. But, one of the things that I was really trying to get, because one of my goals is to get my hands on all of the exclusives, and that also included the subscription boxes. So I never knew if I was ever going to get myself a Disney Treasures, because I didn't really care much for them. But, 
when the big announcement was made that they were going to be discontinuing the subscriptions and having them with specific retail stores, and they randomly happened to announce the new box that was being featured outside of the subscriptions, which was Amazon, it was an adventure box, and the pops were featuring the movie The Rescuers. So I saw that, and here they are. It is not just The Rescuers, but it is a pop ride, and it is absolutely gorgeous because it is Orville with Miss Bianca and Bernard sitting in the little sardine can on top of his back, ready to tackle their adventure as they're going down to Devil's Bayou. I love the details, especially Orville's little smile, and also the big goggles and the details of the scarf and his feet. I love how they're not straightened, they're sort of dangling, which is fantastic, but the details on the top are even better. Bianca and Bernard, I love their expressions. Even when you turn it around, you got sardines on the can, you've also got the little key that twists the foil up, and on the back, you've even got their luggage and little match sticks, which is absolutely awesome. And I love the fact that Bianca is just so excited for her adventure, but Bernard is just a little bit timid. And every single time I look at this pop, and just hold it, I just think of that wonderful song that is featured in this movie, which is Tomorrow is Another Day, and it's a beautiful pop to have in my collection, and so glad to have a Disney Treasures. So that wraps up this phase, so let's go into the rest of the Disney magic with Pixar. So when I was taking a look at my collection, especially when it comes to the Disney stuff, I had noticed a few months back that I really didn't have any Pixar pops in my collection, and Pixar is just as important as Disney canon classics, but lo and behold, it was just because there were things I wasn't interested in. But, as always, I knew that eventually Funko would come through and get me a couple of pops that I was very interested in in regards to the wonderful Pixar library, and I've got four of them to show you today, and I'm pretty certain that in time more will follow, but who knows when that will happen. So, the first one that we're going to take a look at is an Emerald City Comic Con exclusive from this year, and it is the Toy Story Army Man. Of course, the lead of the group was Sarge, who was played by the late Arlie Ernie, and this is definitely one of the most creative pops. It, of course, is as simple as can be. It's just a solid green color with the details, of course, of the Army Man, but why is this one so cool? Well, first of all, the fact that they actually put him on the stand, which is wonderful, but also, I love the sleek shine to the paint, so it actually looks like it is made of plastic, and they even have, and it's even off-center, the little plastic ring from the mold of the Bucket of Soldiers, which is without a doubt the best in regards to taste and creativity, and it's not even a perfect circle. It's got a couple of bends and weird looking grooves, but that's what makes this awesome, as well as the line all around to make it look like it literally came out of the mold. So this is definitely one of the most creative of all the Funko Pops, and the fact that I now officially have Toy Story representing in my collection, as well as the fact that it is green from Emerald City Comic Con, very awesome. Now this is a pop that I did not intend on getting, especially because of the fact that it is a character that I don't really talk about much, but it is Wally, -E, and it is my very first box lunch exclusive, which was an exclusive that I wanted to have in my collection at a certain point in time. The 400th pop in the collection, but also, this was an Earth Day exclusive, and it is actually made out of percentages of recyclable material. If you turn the box around, it actually says the figure is made out of 20% recycled material, the box itself is made out of 80% recycled material, and you can definitely tell because the texture is definitely different, and the window blister box is made out of 100% recyclable material, and even the texture of the Wally Pop is a little bit different too. It's a more squishy feeling plastic and nothing so crazy hard as some of the usual molds, but it is definitely great, and the details are wonderful. I love that it's all also him holding the boot with the plant in it, and it's got all the great details down to the little Wally insignia on his bottom. And it's wonderful all the way around the details of him in regards to the treads, as regards to the little backlights, as well as his amazing expression, which is absolutely wonderful. So a great addition to the collection. So of course, 
When I also found out that they were making Incredibles 2 Pops, I knew that these were going to be additions to my collection as well, because I was not into Pops when they originally made Incredibles Pops, and now they are super, super rare. But also, they didn't have such a selection. They only had four of them entirely, as well as a very special and rare Comic-Con exclusive, which is Mr. Incredible in his old uniform. When I heard about The Incredibles 2, and I saw the details, I knew that there were going to be some that I was going to want to get. And, of course, the one that I really wanted to get was Frozone. Not only am I a big Samuel L. Jackson fan, but this pop just looks amazing. It reminds me very much of my Iceman pop, which is wonderful, but I love these details. I love the fact that they got the goatee right just perfectly. Of course, the visor is great, too, but I love the details on his superhero outfit as as well as the details on the little board that he uses and of course the ice that he is creating and that it's shooting right out of his hand and I also love the pose all the way around this is definitely the best pop in the series and I said I maybe should get another one, so why not get Mr. Incredible? And I like this one a lot because I love the expression. I like how he's got one eyebrow up like The Rock, which is basically saying, I am Mr. Incredible, I am the greatest, but the details all around are great too. I love the details on the Incredibles insignia, I love the action pose, I love the details on the muscles, as well as the hairstyle. This is definitely one of the better pops in the series, and I'm so glad that I decided Decided to get two of these and not just one and I'm so glad that I finally have some Pixar pops to show you guys in my collection that finishes up the haul in the summer of nostalgia now let's take a look at all the new stuff that is coming especially from San Diego Comic-Con so as always, we're going to start with the Specialty Series, and if you are new to my channel and you want to know where you can get Specialty Series Funko Pops, they are only found at comic book and hobby shops. And this is going to be the first of many of the brand new Nightmare Before Christmas Pops that feature a lot of the side characters in the Nightmare Before Christmas world. So Tim Burton fans and Nightmare Before Christmas fans alike are going to really want to get their hands on these. So this Specialty Series is the Wolfman, and he looks absolutely wonderful from his grin with the beautiful teeth as well as the checkered shirt. This is definitely going to be a must-have, so check out your local comic book and hobby shops later on this summer to get your hands on this brand new Nightmare Before Christmas pop. And at the Funko shop, of course, they launched a big amount of news, and they basically said that those first few Monsters of Wetmore Forest, well, that's only the beginning of a much larger world, and the second wave is officially being announced, and this is actually going to be featuring brand new heroes and elders as well as villains, and there's even going to be a chase featuring the one on the bottom, which is Slog and Grub. They look amazing. I'm not interested in getting my hands on these as pops, but the plushies look wonderful too. I know that this is going to be even bigger in the world of Funko. I believe there's an animated series in the works, and getting all of these brand new characters, I'm excited to see where each and every one of them are going to be in the brand new Monsters of Wetmore Forest world. So, they're going to be available in the Funko shop, and if you have your first bunch, I'm sure you're going to want to get your hands on these as well. There's also going to be some very, very exclusive exclusives, as I say. There is going to be the Jack-Jack in the San Francisco Giants onesie that is going to be featured at one of the future San Francisco Giants games. So if you do plan to go to that baseball game, make sure that you get there early so you can get your hands on this soon-to-be exclusively rare pop. And there's going to be a brand new theme park exclusive for Walt Disney World. It is it is Pele and Barker the Parrot from the Enchanted Tiki Room, which is a major attraction in Walt Disney's theme parks. And I especially love the look of both of them. I love the colors on Barker, and I love the wood-esque look of Pele. Pele, these are going to be massive. I know so many people that are going to probably want to get their hands on these, but me, not so much. I'm lucky that I already have a Funko exclusive to Disney theme parks, but this one is definitely going to be an interesting one. And Target announced two of their t-shirt and pop boxes. Of course, we knew that the metallic Deadpool mermaid was going to be in this, and you will be able to get yourself a great t-shirt to go along with your metallic mermaid pop, as well as a Coming to America box of Zamunda, 
and it will also include that gold pop that you saw when the line was first announced at Toy Fair. So, you can get your hands on both of these at Target if you want them. And there was an even bigger leak in regards to the Halloween Comic Fest, and the pop that is going to be featured there, probably more than just this one, is the classic Marvel Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy. So if you read the Guardians comic book, this is definitely perfect for the look of Peter Quill, and you will be able to get this in October. There's a couple of other random single new pops that are going to be available everywhere that I just wanted to give you guys a look at. I, of course, wanted to show you the perfect glam shot of the Rainbow Bright pop. She is definitely one of the better looking pops. I've actually seen her up close, but I am not going to get her. I think one of the coolest things about her is that she has a stand, and it is actually colored like the rainbow, so too much rainbow in this one little box, but so much 80s nostalgia. There's also going to be a new ad icon, and this is, of course, going to start the trend where it's going to be easy to get those ad icons, and this, of course, is Diggum Frog from Honey Smacks. There's also going to be a new Mega Man, which is the Jumping Mega Man, but since I already have my own, I'm not going to invest in this one, but I had to feature it because it is definitely cool. I love how he's got one leg higher than the other, just like in the video game. And there's going to be a new Beetlejuice, and it is Tour Guide Beetlejuice, so if you don't have the original one, this is definitely a great way for you to get your hands on a Beetlejuice pop for yourself. And now we're going to take a look at some really awesome video game pops. They're really, really expanding, and it is unbelievable. The 30th anniversary of the classic arcade game Alter Beast is happening this year, so they had to get some Alter Beast pops, and of course they are 8-bit, which makes so much sense. You can get the regular werewolf, or you can get the golden werewolf, which is the form that you get at the very end of the game, and there's a GameStop exclusive. And of course, Five Nights at Freddy's. This is one of the most popular lines in all of Funko Pop in terms of games, and there's a whole new bunch of them. And I'm really appreciating the color scheme. Very bright colors, but don't let those happy faces fool you. But I'm pretty certain that Five Nights at Freddy's fans are so excited to expand their collection with all of these pops. And they're going to be doing another meshing of two various lines, like they did a while back with the SpongeBob as Leonardo. They are taking Adventure Time and Minecraft and combining them. I'm not sure, because I don't play the game, but I believe that you can have Adventure Time characters in Minecraft. If that is true, please leave your comment in the box below. And another very popular line is Overwatch. Blizzard's Overwatch is going to be giving us an expansion, a brand new wave, and these definitely look awesome, and it also includes a oversized pop, but of course I'm not interested in these, but I'm sure that there are plenty of Overwatch fans that are excited, and because of the popularity of Overwatch, there will be exclusives to various places, including Amazon, Best Buy, GameStop, and Target, and the GameStop exclusive will in fact be a oversized pop. These are repaints, and I'm pretty certain that people are going to be excited for each and every one of these, because they do look pretty good. But I think one of the best things that happened in terms of the game line is the 8-bit expansion of Space Invaders. I don't think there could be any more appropriate extension to the 8-bit line than Space Invaders, because this is exactly what Space Invaders look like if you've ever played the classic 70s arcade game. And... There's going to be tons of versions of this medium invader. He's getting the Skittle treatment, and I, for one, am going to welcome this because I played Space Invaders. I love Space Invaders, and I want to get a GameStop exclusive already. So I think they may have finally given me one to get. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to go for. I'm really looking at the teal one in terms of colors, but if I can find at a GameStop the glow-in-the-dark version, I will probably go for that one. So it's really going to be which one I find find first, but either way, there will be a Space Invader in my collection. It will also be the very first time I get the horizontal box, so I'm even more excited for that. So these do look pretty awesome, and I'm sure that Space Invader fans are going to want to get their hands on these. And the Royals are expanding with two that I was not surprised by. We're going to get a brand new Queen Elizabeth of her in her outfit that she wore to the recent royal wedding, 
and of course, you will be able to get the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, which are Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, and I know so many people who already have the Royals line, the first wave, when they heard that this double pack was coming out, they flipped their lids. So, it looks wonderful, the details on the dress look fantastic, as well as all the medals on Prince Harry's chest, so I'm sure that people who have already collected the Royals are excited for these. And we're going to be getting some new exclusives, I believe these are going to be at Walgreens, they are more Marvel ones, and they are retro characters from the comic books. We finally got the Lizard, and a character called Silk, who I have no idea this is, so please in the comments let me know who Silk is, but they definitely are both part of the Spider-Man world, and they do look pretty cool. And there's even some expansions to the DC lines, there's going to be more Teen Titans Go, these are going to be exclusive at Walmart, you're going to get a sepia-looking version of Raven as Wonder Woman. We already had her, but this looks like the new 52 Wonder Woman, or the sepia, I'm not exactly sure. But the last one was her with the gold in the outfit, but you could also get a camouflage cyborg, and I will not deny that that looks pretty awesome. So, Teen Titans Go! fans, two new exclusives for you at Walmart. And of course, Hot Topic is not going to disappoint with a whole bunch of new exclusives, including two new Diamond Editions, one that's available now, which is Bad Girl, and the one that's coming next month, which is Winnie the Pooh. And now let's move on to some new lines that are being added to some of the larger groupings of pops. We're going to be getting some Pan's Labyrinth pops being added to the movie collection, and these do look wonderful. Part of me sort of wants them, but part of me is also saying don't get them, especially because of the fact that as great as the movie is, and as big of a Guillermo del Toro fan I am, I just don't even have this movie on DVD, so I'm like, as great as these are, and I praise these movies to death, Pan's Labyrinth in particular, I just can't see myself getting one of them, but I would love to see these up close, because the details do look fantastic from afar. 80s fans, oh boy. The Lost Boys. This is awesome. I love the fact that they're giving us one of the greatest cult classics of the 1980s, and you can get all of your favorite characters. The Kiefer Sutherland David with the Chinese takeout box looks fantastic. I love the details. This is also going to be the very first time that we get Corey Haim in pop form as Sam, which is even awesome. But I think the coolest thing is the Funko Shop exclusive, so I'm pretty certain that this is going to be very tough to get is the Frog Brothers, and of course, one of them happens to be Corey Feldman. Part of me wants them, but part of me is also saying that I'm gonna walk away. But there's a very interesting thing that I'm noticing with all these brand new movie pops, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later as we move along. And here we are, the 600th pop in the movie line. Congratulations, Funko. Not really impressed by which one it is, but it is this brand new line of a new animated film that is coming to theaters later on this year called Smallfoot. I don't really care much for it after seeing the trailer, but the fact that we have reached 600 pops in the movie line is unreal, and I will say the details on these pops do look great. I'd like to see another trailer before I actually invest in seeing this film, but am I going to get these pops? Absolutely not, but I'm pretty certain people will. And once again, let's go to the animation world, and the animation line is even about to hit 400, and we got a line that I think people have been begging for, and that, of course, is the Yu-Gi-Oh! line. I never watched this show, but I know so many people who are excited that they're making this, so these do look great in terms of detail, but I'm not getting them, but I'm pretty certain that people will. So, you've asked, you've been patient, maybe not so much patient, but Yu-Gi-Oh! Pops are coming. And another line in the world of animation? Digimon. The digital monsters are finally coming, and maybe Pokemon somewhere down the line as well, but I know a lot of people who are just as excited for the Digimon line as they were for the Yu-Gi-Oh! line, so they're coming, guys. Get ready. But here's something that I was excited for. They're giving us another wave of Dragon Ball Z. I wasn't sure if I was going to get any of them past Shenron, but of course, they give me something that I'm interested in. I love the Gohan in the training outfit. This is my favorite look of Gohan, so like the black-haired Goku, I want to get my hands on this one. But the one that I also want to get in this grouping is Bulma. And it's just because of the fact that I love her expression, and it kind of makes me want to see a Chi-Chi pop. But as great as all of these other ones, including the FYE exclusive of Master Roshi looks, I'm still wondering where all the villains are. Where's the Ginyu Force? Where are the androids, and even outside of them, I'd love to see a Mr. Satan, and a Videl, and Great Saiyan Man. 
I would even love to see a King Kai. And yeah, even characters like Raditz and Nappa. We have so many more characters that people absolutely love in this world, and even more heroes and villains. I mean, I would love to see more Dragon Ball Z characters, and who knows how many of these I'm going to add to my collection now, because these threw me for a loop, and they do look wonderful. MacGyver fans, you're going to get a pop too. That 80s know how to do it cop is finally getting his own pop and i'm liking the fact that it is actually based on the 80s show and not the more recent show starring lucas till so he's even got the little swiss army knife which is awesome and the look does look great so macgyver fans you're gonna get a pop and this is actually the 707th of the television line. Can you believe that? I never would have imagined that so many pops would have come out of these two monster lines and they're only getting bigger. So congratulations to the television line for getting their 700th pop already, even though this one is 707. And another big popular show that people really are talking about is The American Gods, which I believe is a Netflix show. It's possibly a Hulu show. I'm not sure. I'm not interested in these, but they do look pretty cool. And there's also going to be a chase included in this series, so if you are an American Gods fan, you're probably going to want to get your hands on these. And another Netflix show that a lot of people have been talking about is Big Mouth, so these I'm not interested in. I haven't even watched the show yet, but they say that it's a very good show. Maybe I'll watch it somewhere down the line, but I've heard from people who do like the show that these are very well detailed. They look like they're exactly coming out of the cartoon, so fans of this show, you can get yourselves pops now. But here is a real trip down memory lane. One of the greatest TV shows is getting a pop line. When the Golden Girls came out, I had a feeling that they were going to turn these into pops as well. And it is Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, the classic show, I Love Lucy. And these look wonderful. You've got Ricky and Lucy. You've even got Lucy in the Chocolate Factory, which is without a doubt one of the biggest and most popular episodes of the show, and there's even going to be some black and white exclusives, one at Target and one at Barnes & Noble. Part of me actually wants to try and get my hands on one of the black and white ones just because of all the nostalgia. As someone who has actually watched reruns of the show, it's wonderful, but part of me was kind of craving a Vitamin to Vegemin version of Lucy. Maybe we'll get that one somewhere down the line, but I know so many people that are excited for these I Love Lucy pops. And even more in the world of classics, we've got Betty Boo becoming a pop. It was a matter of time before she and her little dog Pudgy were going to become pops. So you can get a common of her in full color in a red dress, but you can also get two Entertainment Earth exclusives. One will be a chase. You can get a black and white Betty Boop, or you can get a black and white Betty Boop in a red dress, and Pudgy, who is included in that chase as well, will have a little kiss from Betty. So fans of this classic character, I'm pretty certain that she is going to sell. And Star Wars fans even with all the controversy, are so excited that a Star Wars Clone Wars line is coming because we are finally getting an Anakin Skywalker. So rejoice, everybody. You're also going to get Ahsoka Tano with a Hot Topic exclusive and Obi-Wan Kenobi in his Clone Wars gear, as well as probably one of the best-looking Yoda pops that I have ever seen. Part of me sort of wants it, but I need to see it up close. I love how his ears are uneven in that one, but I know for a fact that people have been begging for Anakin Skywalker and a young Obi-Wan that is easy to obtain as well, well guess what guys, your wish has been granted. And also some other very interesting pops. There's going to be a Target exclusive of a 10-inch Scrooge McDuck, which is based on the past year's New York City Comic Con exclusive of the pop of him jumping out of a pile of gold. So if you want to get that oversized version, he is at Target. But there's also going to be an awesome pop ride, which is Elastigirl on the Elasticycle. Part of me sort of wanted it, but part of me has decided not to go after it, especially since I love the movie so much. But this is definitely one of the better looking pop rides. I'd love to at least see it up close. And going back into the wonderful world of Disney, we've got a celebration, which of course is the 90th anniversary of Mickey Mouse. So we've got a whole bunch of new Mickey Mouse pops to enjoy, including a brand new Steamboat Willie and an Apprentice Mickey, as well as other various versions of Mickey Mouse from other of his animation shorts. So if you never got your hands on a Steamboat Willie or Sorcerer Mickey, this is your chance to get one of them, or just Mickey in general if you never got one, because these do look wonderful, and he does deserve a great makeover for his birthday. 
So now let's get into the pops that you all have been wanting to take a look at, and that, of course, is all the pops from San Diego Comic-Con, and I'll also let you know which ones I am interested in. Now, I'm not going to give you guys all of them in wave order. I sort of mixed and matched just to go along with specific themes, so hopefully you won't be upset, but I'm really curious to see what your reactions will be in regards to all of these exclusives. It wasn't the greatest of reveals, as a matter of fact. There's been a lot of disappointment, and for me... I'm sort of happy about that, because I didn't want to spend that much money. But I'm going to stop talking and just go on to the pops. So first, we have some special ones that are going to be available at Entertainment Earth and Fugitive Toys. They are going to be available at the con, but you do have the ability to pre-order them directly from their sites. So, you can get an 8-bit Nintendo Batman, which is pretty awesome, I have to admit. I like the fact that 8-bit finally understands its purpose here, so the fact that they were actually getting one that is based on the Nintendo game makes so much more sense. But, when cons come around, they always like to give us White Lanterns, and this year Fugitive Toys is offering a Kyle Rayner White Lantern. This is the first time that Kyle Rayner is being featured as a pop, and we've gotten all of the other ones. What does this mean? Will we finally get an actual Kyle Rayner in his Green Lantern suit? Only time will tell, but you can also get a glow-in-the-dark version as well. And of course, we can't have San Diego Comic-Con without the new Conan line. We have four new ones, and they do look wonderful. It's Ant-Man Conan, Poe Dameron Conan, Hellboy Conan, and Predator Conan. I love the way the Hellboy looks. There's always one that outshines the others. I think last year for me it was White Walker Conan, and the year before that it was Joker Conan. These aren't very hard to get, because you can only get these at San Diego Comic-Con, and also he has his one show at the con every single year. However, there's a little treat that us Conan appreciators have finally gotten this year, and that is the fact that GameStop is going to be featuring its own Conan exclusive pops. You'll be able to get them with ease if you go to your local GameStop, but there's going to be three of them. There's going to be regular Conan in a suit, him taking off his shirt to reveal a superhero outfit underneath, and him in full-on superhero. And my wife is a huge Conan O'Brien fan. I would love to get my hands on a Conan O'Brien pop just for her, so we'll see if I actually am able to get one of them. And of course, Funko has to reveal some of its pops from its own personal spastic plastic line. From the spastic plastic line. And they, of course, are numbers 9 and 10 in the set. And it is Gil and Sam. These will be exclusive to the con. And I'm not really interested in any of the spastic plastic, but I know lots of people that are. And especially after seeing the Funko documentary, I know how popular these characters can be. And two completely out of left field, uh, just as random, we have another icon, which is the Crunchberry Beast, and I actually know this character. Not interested in getting it, but I like the fact that they made it. And an exclusive of Asuka that apparently was supposed to be a target that is now available at the con. So, WWE fans, we've got an exclusive for you there. So we'll start off with all the big announcements, and that, of course, will start with the anime line, and we've got some interesting ones, including a dead Yamcha, a Super Saiyan Broly, which I know so many people are excited for, but the one that's very impressive to me is the Toy Tokyo exclusive of Tarna from Heavy Metal. That is such a cult classic movie. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out, especially if you want to see something completely interesting and original, and I love the fact that she is becoming a pop, even though I'm not interested in getting her, and the others include the Black Lady from Sailor Moon, Whis from Dragon Ball Super, and a gold Super Saiyan Vegeta, who is a Toy Tokyo exclusive. We also have Star Wars. Not too much, but I know a lot of people who are excited for the Cad Bane from Clone Wars. And the Stormtrooper that was announced when they announced the Solo, a Star Wars storyline, is officially a con exclusive. I think he was supposed to be a PX Previews exclusive, but now he's at the con. And DC, also not a major amount of interesting stuff for me. I mean, I'm not really sure about the Chrome Triple Pack of the Justice League Flash, as well as the Fading Flash. I don't really care for it much, but the Killer Moth from Teen Titans Go with Silky is going to definitely be popular, and the Red Hood is already having people talking. People really do want that Red Hood, but me? Not so much. 
And of course, the ones that a lot of people are excited about is the two directors that they announced. They announced James Wan, who is going to be directing Aquaman later this year, and Taika Waititi, who of course directed Thor Ragnarok last year. So we have Marvel fans and DC fans and just movie fans in general, but these are going to be limited. So these are only available at the con. Maybe they'll show up on the Funko Shop, but these are going to be tough to get. So if you get one of these or both, congratulations. And the comics line is expanding with a Hellboy in a suit, as well as a Saga flocked Gus in pajamas. I know so many of my book tube friends who love Saga and are so excited for Gus, so I am going to let them know as best as I possibly can where they will be able to find him, but I'm not interested in either of these. And the games line also got an expansion at the con with Soldier 76, which was a special summer look for him from Overwatch and the sweeper bot from Destiny. I know that people are excited for these and I know that these will sell and these are not going to be con exclusives. These will be shared so you'll have your chance to get them. Now we got the movie line, and the one that ended up being the limited amount turned out to be the one I didn't expect. So we've got Scott Pilgrim double packs of Matthew Patel and the Demon Chick, which is pretty awesome, but that's the shared exclusive. The limited piece is the pop ride from Mad Max Fury Road, the Nux car. I think that people that are Funko Pop collectors are furious because this one is limited to 5,000 pieces. The details look unreal. I am shocked that this is the limited one because this one would have sold like hotcakes wherever it had gone. This would have been this year's Dean and Baby. But the fact that it is being limited to 5,000 pieces along with a very interesting looking box is really surprising. So fans of Mad Max, I know you've been asking for this one. I hope you get it. And we've got a new expansion from Marvel and some very interesting ones. We've got a limited piece version of Deadpool in a pink cheerleader outfit. And we've also got some very interesting ones, including Kraglin from Guardians, Valkyrie and Thor from Thor Ragnarok, a classic comic book Ant-Man, and a Mach 1 Iron Man, which is part of the Marvel Studios 10th Anniversary Group. The details on the Mach 1 look great, but I'm not interested in any of these. But I'm pretty certain that the one that everybody wants is the pink Deadpool, especially because he's in limited peace. So I'm hoping that people who are excited for these will get their hands on them. This was probably the first really good grouping that Funko announced for the con. So up until this point, I haven't been interested in any of these exclusives, and then they broke me with the Disney line. There are so many fan favorites here from Moana, to Doug, to The Incredibles, to Kingdom Hearts. But the ones that really excited me were the 8-Bit Wreck-It Ralph and Fix-It Felix. I'm not interested in the Fix-It Felix, but the Wreck-It Ralph I have to have because this is the perfect version of Wreck-It Ralph. It makes so much sense. And then, of course, there is the Pain and Panic double pack, which I thought was going to be a common FYE exclusive, but now it's at the con. And as someone who already has Hades, I gotta have Pain and Panic. I love them so much. So hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on the Pain and Panic and the Wreck-It Ralph 8-bit pop. And for Harry Potter fans, they sort of disappointed, but at the same time, they sort of excited people. Two glow-in-the-dark versions of the two ghosts in the film, Nearly Headless Nick and Moting Myrtle. Nearly Headless Nick was already a regular in the new Harry Potter line, so the fact that they just gave us a brand new one that glows in the dark is a little bit cheap, if you ask me. I really thought they were going to give us some more good stuff, but I know a lot of people who are still excited for them. And then they gave us some retro animation, and I think they did not disappoint. They gave us three that will be shared exclusives, and four that will be limited, and I'm not surprised about the ones that are limited. So the ones that you'll be able to get in stores are Peppy Le Pew and Playboy Penguin, who I actually know who that is from Looney Tunes, wonderful, and a Hanna-Barbera classic Captain Caveman. The limited pieces are all four of the banana splits, Flegel, Bingo, Drooper, and Snorky. And I never watched the show, but I know I know this show, I know the songs, the details look great, and I'm pretty certain that true Hanna-Barbera appreciators are going to get them. I am just eternally grateful that none of the limited pieces were additional characters from the Jetsons, so I'm still getting my fingers crossed for more Jetsons pops to come. And then we've got some other random animation that are a little bit more for the adults and preteens and teenagers. We have two new ones from Rick and Morty, which are Western Rick and Western Morty, who were a brief feature in a Rick and Morty episode. There's also Espresso Trip Tina with her unicorn from Bob's Burgers. And there are two new additions to the Master of the Universe line. One that is Stinkor, 
who happens to be scented. Very interesting. But the one that a lot of people are upset about is the fact that it's shared with Toy Tokyo, and, and that is Ram Man. I'm really hoping that my friends who collect these will be able to get their hands on both Stinkor and Ram Man, because the details on Ram Man are wonderful, but I'm not interested in either of them. So either way, they do look cool, so I hope that the people who want them will get them. And then we had television, and we had a lot of different television shows, from Netflix to HBO to regular. I'm interested in one of them. And that, of course, is Olena Tyrell, who is played by Diana Rigg. She is one of my favorite characters on the show, so I must have her. But I know a lot of people who are very excited for Josie from Riverdale, as well as the Dustin from Stranger Things in the Snowball Dance. And I gotta admit, the Toy Tokyo exclusive of Green Hornet and Kato is awesome. Because I know so many people who were excited to see the Green Hornet when he was a specialty series pop, so now that Kato is in this double pack, it's great. I just hope that Toy Tokyo will not be stingy and people will be able to get their hands on that double pack. I gotta say, my count is three, and I am pretty happy about the fact that it's not that many, but I gotta say that I wasn't too impressed by this year's San Diego Comic-Con. I mean, knowing that I'm still going to get my share is nice to know. I'm just hoping that it's not going to be difficult to get them. But I'm curious. I'm wondering what that means about New York Comic-Con. I'm wondering how many they're going to feature, and I'm wondering how many favorites there are going to be. So part of me is hoping that the trend that we got this year is going to be the same, at least for me, for next year. Thank you so much for sticking to the end, everybody. I'm really hoping that you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it, even though it was such a long video. But anyway, I would love to talk to you guys about anything and everything Funko Pops, so leave your comments in the box below, and let me know which Funko Pops were featured at San Diego Comic-Con that you are interested in getting, because if you are, especially if you don't live in the United States, I'd like to give you a hand and make sure that you guys get your hands on what you like. So leave your comments in the box below like I said earlier. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next month for the 50th Funko Pop update. Take care. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments and actions speak louder than words.